Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I present what some of my recent experimentation has been leading up to and namely that is a combination jet ramjet, scramjet and aerospike. This came about because I noticed that the back end of an aerospike basically looks like the top part of the back end of a scramjet. Uh, basically uh, the back end of a scramjet has this slope and it continues upward and uh, basically you can think of it as a really huge nozzle as it uh, expands outward in the back and I realized that we could just integrate the aerospike into that and that is what I've done there but of course if you just have a scramjet and an aerospike you still need something else to launch it because the scramjet's not going to work unless you're going at like Mach 5 uh, so you could have a mothership that can get you to Mach 5, for instance the Orion carrier plane that I already have, or you could fit it with jet ramjets, basically just uh, sort of souped up versions of what the SR-71 had. And of course in this case they'd be using liquid hydrogen, be more efficient, and they'll need to get more thrust and get us closer to Mach 5. So we have two of those, you can see the spikes. I don't know if it's legal to have them like this or whether just like Skylon we would have to put them on the outboard, on the wings and make sure they're, you know, sort of uh, cylindrical. But the problem with doing that is that I think that might cause problems for the scramjet part of it. Scramjets need the whole body to look a certain way. Now, I don't know exactly what way would be optimal because as far as I can tell, that is probably classified information because it's, you know, something that people are using for uh, military purposes. So, yeah, I, I doubt we can easily access uh, the real information. I've watched a course on scramjets and hypersonics. Uh, from I think University of Queensland or something like that on edX and they gave a lot of uh, conceptual information not a lot of equations so it was a little bit disappointing going through that but yeah not enough information to really deal with this properly so I did the best I could based on images I previously made the SR-72 or Dark Star from the Top Gun movie and more precisely from Microsoft Flight Sim and but I made it more realistically than it either appears in the movie or in Microsoft Flight Sim. You might uh, want to take a look at those videos. So that is a scramjet and so I've got that little experience. Uh, there they use two different uh, two scramjets. I don't even know if that's a good idea or not. Here we have we have just one big opening and the entire forward part of the body sort of leads up to it. It, it's all sort of part of it. It's uh, just like the A-10 is built around its gun. Uh, the scramjet airplanes have to be built around the scramjet. And so that's what we have here. And then we've got the air spikes and the jets. And then most of the body is filled with hydrogen. I made sure to place the tanks in blender. And there's hydrogen there. And uh, where the scramjet opening ends around here is where the oxygen is. So the oxygen is basically center mounted in here. We don't need that much oxygen because we're hoping that the scramjet will get us to like Mach 12. And at Mach 12 then we'll switch to the aerospikes. So the goal is to make like the optimal thing at any given flight regime. We've got jets at you know low speeds and these jets there's a multi-mode engine so that we can so that we can get the efficiency right or as close to red as possible. So this can do 9,500 seconds of ISP in jet mode. And then there's the ramjet mode. There it gets 4,500. It could possibly do more than that. It, uh, most of the numbers that we have is uh, for kerosene. Uh, and so, or, you know, the equivalent. So the numbers for liquid hydrogen for ramjets uh, are a little bit vague. But generally the liquid hydrogen is much, much more efficient than the kerosene. Um, a bigger gap than for rocket engines so but it's still a little bit tough to tell so anyway the normal rating for these is 900 kilonewtons which is a lot but it's still about half of what the Skylon engines provide so we could possibly upgrade them a little bit 
but if I do, I should probably increase their mass as well, so that's the downside. Uh, the max thrust stated here isn't really the max thrust. This is a complicated thing when it comes to Kerbal Space Program and how it deals with the way thrust is applied at higher altitudes, but yeah, uh, so ignore that. It's basically rated for 900 kilonewtons. Actually, uh, the, in ramjet mode, it'll probably get about 2,000, but it'll guzzle fuel like crazy. And then there's the aerospike, not the aerospike, sorry, the scramjet. And that has two modes, but we'll mostly try uh, scramjet L, which will get us our max thrust at Mach 9 of 3,000 kilonewtons. This only gets 3,200 seconds of ISP. And is that the right number? I don't know. Uh, if it was a kerosene one, then it would get much less than that. I know that. It'd be more like 1,800. But yeah, we'll try this and see how it goes. So peaks out at Mach 9. This H1 uh, has its peak at Mach 12. So that's the difference there. So, but we'll see. But the H1 also has less ISP, so... And then we have three of these scramjet aerospike engines. This a legacy from the Venture Star. So here they're 2,000 kilonewtons. They're less uh, powerful than the Venture Star ones, uh, but the same efficiency that I ultimately set upon, and a little bit less massive. But the thrust weight ratio is probably reasonable for an aerospike hydrolox aerospike. So yep, there are three of those right now. I don't know if that's what we need. Maybe we can do two. Uh, the mass of this overall is the same as, basically the same as the mass of the Skylon, except we're not carrying cargo. This is a crew only vessel. And we've got some crew area up front. Actually, quite a lot of area. If we want to pack more fuel, we could, but I don't think this can carry it with the engines that it has right now. So, yeah, it's all sort of based on the experience with the SR-72, Venture Star, and Skylon. And we are going to see if that's enough. <laughs> the landing gear configuration is a little bit weird because I don't want to put the nose gear up front and have it be exceedingly long. But the center mass is here, so I figure we could manage it. As you can see, pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Uh, I don't know how it's going to be if we... Uh, that's not good. <laughs> so that's because of the aero spikes. Maybe I'll have to fix that, but that's not something we need to worry about at the moment, maybe. Uh, for now, we can probably get away with that. We'll see. So, yeah, I'll take that into consideration. The heavy aero spikes in the back do tend to pull things. We'll just have to pretend that there's more mass up front and see how this goes. Let's uh, make sure we're on the shuttle runway. We're going to need that. Let me just toggle it so I can remind it. And see how this goes. I'm fully expecting that there need to be many changes and there could be a lot. Because there's so many different moving parts. There's five different engine configurations on this. And balancing it all out is going to be fun. Oh, well, our first error seems to be that there's a plume issue on the scramjet part. Um, I don't know why. I, I copied exactly the same plume as, as on the uh, jet ramjet part, so I don't know why that part is different. They both have two modes. Beats me. Okay, fine. Be that way. All right. Atmospheric gallop pilot, and off we go with the jets. At least that seems nominal for now. Let's get their numbers out. About 800 kilonewtons. Not a whole lot when you think about it. Maybe we should up them a little bit because we're not going to get a whole lot of... Right now we're getting 170 tons of thrust and our vessel mass is 334. Okay, let's not scrape the tail or anything. sense it's wanting to go up yet. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'll take it. Like that 200 meters per second. I might need, I mean I, I don't feel like I ought to make the wings any larger but maybe 
the drag of the body is just too much. It's got sort of a platypus look to it. Definitely does not accelerate the way Skylon did. And that's because these engines are half the thrust as uh, the Skylon engines. They're physically smaller though too. It's easier to get higher thrust engines when you put them on the wingtips. Uh, well, though that really requires hefty wings, doesn't it? So just verifying that the scramjet isn't actually on, even though the plumes are there, it isn't. And I guess we'll get far out. We should stay subsonic for now, for sure. The canards are directly from Skylon, actually. I just took the Skylon canards onto this. I was contemplating a body flap. I made one, but I just haven't finished configuring it yet. I don't know if I need one or not. Well, so far it handles pretty well. Okay, we'll accelerate now. Aside from just having the engines work, we have to make sure that they don't work too well. In other words, the jet engine has to sort of die down. It doesn't look like it's got get us. It barely looks like it's going to get us past Mach 1, much less get us to Mach 3 or anything like that. Um, so we're probably going to have to switch to ramjet mode early. So it's probably underperforming a little bit. And then, you know, the ramjet can't get us past, uh, too much past Mach 5.4 if that, and then the scramjet can't go too far, and so forth, so we need to keep things limited. Now in theory scramjets, you know, some people say scramjets could do Mach 20, but I don't think so. Quite apart from everything else, while you're sticking around trying to uh, breathe in the air, you're incurring quite a lot of heat at that point, so that would probably require a whole complicated cooling mechanism that would make this a lot heavier. Uh, already this is uh, a lot heavier than the Skylon is, just uh, the bare mass of it. And we're compensating for that by the fact that we're breathing the oxygen in for longer, at least we're hoping. And we're not, we're, we've got a pressurized cabin to deal with, but not really that much payload. Now, if it turns out that we can carry payload, that'd be great. I'll gladly put a hatch on the top and we'll carry payload, right? Or a cargo bay hatch, I mean. But I'm not betting on that. Oh, 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 oh. It started losing speed right there. I don't know why. Well, I tried to fizz warp, it lost speed. Oh, it lost one engine while I was trying to fizz warp. Okay. Mm, nope, the other engine did not turn back on. Okay, well, we can do a stall recovery apparently. Well, that's not optimal, but we're probably going to have other things go wrong anyway. Well, this time I'll just switch to uh, ramjet mode sooner. So here we go. That's the switch. Very brief. Uh, it gives us a lot more thrust. And of course acceleration. But less efficiency by half. By less than half. Okay, we are past Mach 3. Still acceler accelerating well. I fall down a bit because we, well, I was climbing, but now we could probably pour it on a little bit more. We seem to be consuming food, water, and oxygen, but I don't see the Kerbal portraits, so I'm wondering about that. There should be a cabin. There are Kerbals here, but they're not showing up, and I don't know why, actually. That's disturbing. Now well, past Mach 4.
probably carrying too much oxygen considering how much hydrogen we've consumed. We might want to swap some of that stuff. Well, I can't fizz warp. <laughs> that caused problems last time, so we were not going to do that. Uh, I don't think we're going to accelerate much more than this. And we're really guzzling the hydrogen, so... Gonna try and switch to scramjet mode. Oh. Hmm. No, what does it say? Scramjet SSTO melted its internals from heat. Well, I guess I'll have to fix that. I, I don't know why. Let me just quickly take a peek at the stuff. Thought I had put... Yeah, the, the body has a lot of heat tolerance. Um, I'll have to see where else heat happens in the configurations to avoid that, I suppose. Well, I'll reduce the heat production. I don't know how... I mean, the aerospike... I mean, the scramjet is working... I always say aerospike when I say scramjet. Anyway, uh, the scramjet was working at the same uh, speed as the ramjet was, so I don't know why it should be in such a dire situation. The ramjet actually has higher heat production. Um, so, well, the peculiarities of trying to configure these things, besides the fact that I copied the configuration from the SR-72, which certainly was able to get to Mach 10, so or past Mach 9 anyway, so why was the SR-72 able to do it and this has a problem? That's another question. So, well, anyway, I, this is what I'm working on. And as you can see, it's going to need some work. So I was just here to report that this is the project underway here at Raise Zero Space. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.